I want to climb it, guys. I just want to see how easy it is to climb. Guys, I'm like, I'm so grateful that I climbed trees as a kid. Climbing is my forte. Hey guys, welcome to my daily vlogs. Please subscribe. What's up, Mabuhai Squad? How are you doing? Did you sleep well? We are here once again at the Mabuhai Squad farmhouse. I'm gonna take you around. Um, and guys, I'm getting like super emotional. I don't know if it's because of the cop, the coffee rush <laughs> that I'm having this morning, um, or the fact that um, we're super close now to moving in to the Mabuhai Squad farmhouse. It's been such a long journey, guys, seriously. And seeing all your comments of support just fills my heart up so much. Thank you so much for being such a family to RJ and I and to all of those who've been following us on this journey from the moment we bought the lot uh, to now four years later thank you guys so much all right guys now before we go in I wanted to show you this um, see this plant here see how small it is this here is a baby acacia tree so I believe the acacia trees release seeds or something I'm not too sure, but these little acacia trees just pop out of nowhere. They kind of remind me of like, you know, maple trees in Canada. They just kind of grow on their own when they want, but they start off really small. And then if you don't cut them and you let them grow on their own, they get about that big. And then if you leave them some more, they get that big. And then if you just let them grow, they turn into a massive, massive, huge acacia tree. See, there's another acacia growing there and another baby one growing right there and I was talking to RJ I'm like RJ should we cut them um, because this here is our side lot right and my hopes for this lot was you know a place to grow crops <laughs> like corn maybe um, and also house our animals so chickens Billy will be living on this side lot if we ever get a cow it would also live here things like that I, I could build a large aviary here but if we l allow these acacia trees to just like grow rogue on their own we'll have an acacia forest in I would say two three years so what do you guys think should we like cut them while they're small or should we just let this entire side lot grow into a forest and like plant our vegetables in like a food forest style like permaculture style where we don't have to add fertilizer because the tree the trees nourish the soil on their own yeah acacias dominate <laughs> this entire area like i would really want to plant endemic trees like native trees that should really be the priority because acacia was introduced to the philippines i believe from south america omg guys okay so this here is the team from the company Hupo Philippines. Go follow them on social media. They provided all of our mirrors, guys. So this entire wall will be a huge floor to ceiling mirror. <laughs> I love mirrors, guys. I, and it's not just a narcissistic thing. It's really, I love how mirrors make a space look larger. I'm also superstitious due to what my parents used to say where whatever's reflected in the mirror, like especially if it's food, it like duplicates those blessings. So um, I find mirrors are lucky. This is our friend John from Hupo. Hi John. Thank you for coming this morning. Um, All right. We could check ourselves in the mirror before we head out. Um, if ever we decide to do like a dance number, we've got a mirror for like a studio. Is that it? Wow, it is huge. How many are here? Oh, three panes of mirrors. So Your this, mirrors. Yeah, my mirrors. Because <laughs> <laughs> we were deciding like, what should we put there? And I'm like, can we put a mirror, please? So yeah, a mirror will be going up there. Yay. All right, so here is the aviary. Some of the team members are making sure our windows are properly sealed. Um, there's no issues there. And um, of course, as you guys have been seeing in the past few vlogs, this aviary has been causing me a lot of like sleepless nights. In fact, last night I was not able to sleep. I um, finally went to bed at 7 a.m. this morning and then we left at like 9.30. So I, I am not properly slept. And it's all because my mind was 
racing at a million thoughts a second. Um, just staying up doing research on birds and aviaries and all of that stuff. Plants. So my uh, dream for this, in case you're new, is to decorate this like a forest. Like a tropical forest. There will be a water feature at the bottom here. And I'll be putting birds in here. What species of birds? I left it up to you guys, the subscribers, to guess. I did create a vlog where I went over my options for birds. So go check that out. But I didn't say which birds I finally decided on. By the way guys, I'd like to thank Brusco Brows for retouching my final retouch for eyebrows. I literally have like my dream eyebrows now. Um, for those of you who are new, Brusco Brows is, um, they're like a, this awesome, is it a company? Yeah, that does microblading. Um, they do men, they do females, but uh, they mostly do males. And what it is, is it's, it, they take a little thing and they tattoo like little hairs on your eyebrows. It usually takes three sessions and when it completely heals, it looks like you have eyebrows. Because if you look at my older videos, I naturally don't have eyebrows. Like my eyebrows disappear on camera and I figure, you know, because I'm always on camera, here in the Philippines I'm doing TV commercials, all of that, might as well give myself some eyebrows. Help the makeup artists out a little bit. So thank you, Brusco Brows. Yay. All right, guys. So before going in, I just want to soak up a few moments of morning sun. Just chilling here by the pool. So this pool won't be completed when we're moved in. But um, we will work on it. Phase B, guys. Um, but yeah, having my morning coffee and I'm like totally pretending that we're living here already. <laughs> I'm like visualizing splashing my feet in our pool which um, by the way we've uh, we're, we're actually working and partnering with a pool company that specializes in creating chlorine less pools so it's a freshwater pool it's not even a saltwater pool it's a freshwater pool i believe it works on ions along with other like like ways to keep the water clean um so it's very eco-friendly because the problem with uh, chlorine is I don't know if you guys have gone swimming in chlorine pools for like a long time your eyes get really red um, and some people really react to chlorine like they get allergic reactions and rashes and that kind of thing um, it's not the healthiest chemical to um, you know pose your body to so yeah this is um, I believe it uses UV too I'm not sure I forget but we'll do a vlog on the technology for sure once we have everything set up uh, so this will be a freshwater pool and guys I totally expect that one day I will wake up drink my coffee out here with the dogs go to the pool and we will find all kinds of wildlife when you have a large body of water in the yard it attracts all kinds of wildlife guys and I expect that to happen here with our pool see that right there all of that that's like a pretty dense forest so yeah there's like all kinds of wildlife out there Birds will come, you know, to have a drink from the water. I really look forward to that. All the workers are on break now, so it's nice and quiet. Initially with this aviary, my plan was to completely decorate it, place in our huge three-story tree, plant our plants all around, set it up in its completion, allow the plants to really establish, and wait till it was 100% finished before moving in the birds um, and getting the birds. However, after thinking about it for a long, long time, uh, I realized that probably isn't the best strategy because I don't know how the birds will behave inside the aviary. There is a possibility that once I do place in the birds and you know, I had spent, I don't know, a whole year building the, you know, a complete aviary, perfectly decorated like a forest, that they'd go in and destroy it. Destroy all my work, rip out plants that like took months to establish. Um, or possibly maybe my design won't really suit the birds. Um, maybe it might be too lush. It might, you know, there are just so many things that could go wrong. Um, and it would also be an ex a more expensive venture if that were to happen. And so my strategy now is to basically just add a basic structure. So 
driftwood, branches, the water feature, some plants, you know what I'm saying? Not completely decorated. And then when I get the birds and they'll be living in cages mostly for the first little while and allow the birds to kind of like explore the aviary and at least that way as I'm living with them I can learn more about them and how they behave in a space like this and I can just build and further decorate gradually. Do you know what I'm saying? Like uh, the more I get to know how the birds utilize the space, I can try planting sample plants and see if the birds disturb those plants. And if they don't, I could plant more of those plants. Um, or if they do destroy those plants, I'll know not to plant those kind of plants, that kind of thing. Um, and just kind of build the aviary as I go along and kind of, you know, improvise as I get to know the birds more. I think that would be a better strategy. What do you guys think? So, yeah, and it would also be more cost effective too, I think. Um, so I think that's what I'm gonna do now. Just gonna decorate it, just the basics, right? Give the birds what they need and then gradually design the aviary with the birds already living in them. Now in terms of decorating this aviary, we are going to keep some of the scaffolding. I want to climb it, guys. I just want to see how easy it is to climb. Guys, I'm like, I'm so grateful that I climbed trees as a kid. Climbing is my forte. Back when I did the Spartan, you guys know the Spartan race, right? Any like of the obstacles involving climbing, I could have done it with my eyes closed. Okay, so I'm really high now. Here on the second floor, so um, yeah, we're gonna keep some of the scaffolding so I could use it to, you know, decorate, plant plants. See, see these rings here? I can place bromeliads there, um, secure driftwood pieces. It's gonna be really, really interesting, I think. There are already like wild birds flying around our aviary, guys. They're coming in from the roof and from like the first floor. Oh, it's so cool. I love it here. I wonder if I should like install some kind of structure that I could just like climb, right? Like a natural looking ladder that I could just keep on one side of the aviary and it kind of blends in with the decor. I gotta think, I gotta think. So when we move in, guys, I expect to be here in the aviary a lot. Look at how high I am, guys. <laughs> I'm a bird. The workers are looking at me weird. Um, and definitely when we get the birds, I'll be spending a lot of time in this aviary. I, sh I need to get a hat. Ooh, I do wanna bond with the birds. I say the birds because yeah, we're getting more than one. Not gonna tell you the exact number. Just gonna leave it as a surprise when we get them. So it's not gonna be like when we had Ligaya, our African gray parrot where we, you know, hand raised one and it bonded with me exclusively. It's not gonna be like that. Um, the birds, I think, will kind of have the opportunity to choose to bond with each other. Um, and I'll be part of the flock. So I'm just gonna spend a lot of time around the birds until they get to know me as like part of their flock. And I'll have my little pouch, my clicker for training. Yay, can't wait. I get to be among the birds. I also have been thinking a lot about what else we can add into this aviary. I think I might add lizards. <laughs> if we ever find a tuko, do you guys know what that is? Reptile keepers know it as a toke gecko. Um, they're native to Southeast Asia, including here in the Philippines. And they make this loud tuko, tuko noise um, <laughs> in the night. I, if I find any on the farm, I'm gonna release them here because I need them to like eat the bugs and stuff. Um, possibly ground-dwelling lizards, like skinks. Um, again, we have lots of skinks here in the Philippines and in our yard, I've seen them. So we might possibly release those. Um, and I expect the birds to not disturb those lizards. So that should be interesting too. So um, some of you guys have, in the comments, brought up the issue of what happens if the birds breed? Because that's definitely a concern. Uh, one is, well, my plan, 
is to, if I do see signs of them breeding, for example, building a nest or being really aggressive as a pair, like when I see, you, it's pretty obvious when birds bond with each other because they're always together. Just like me and RJ, they, fo we, they follow each other around, they eat together, they're like clearly bonded. They groom each other, they even like regurgitate and feed each other. Uh, when I see that happening, I'll just keep my eye on that pair and you know, if they start to show signs of nest building or uh, showing aggression to the other birds, I'll have to then take those that pair and then relocate them to their own breeding cage um, and possibly give them a nesting box so they can breed. So I've looked into the laws in terms of what is allowed and what isn't allowed for breeding of animals and birds. And uh, so what I found is that there's this thing called the permit called the Certificate of Wildlife Registration. And um, basically it allows anyone to own pet exotic pets like birds, reptiles, that kind of thing. You can register all of your exotic pets under your file, right? If you have your Certificate of Wildlife Registration. And to my surprise, I learned that you can also breed. You can be a breeder. So if my animals were to accidentally breed, like I'm not intentionally breeding my animals, but if they do end up breeding, I could actually take those babies and sell them to people who, um, you know, or, or give them away, I don't know, uh, legally to uh, those who would like to buy those babies. And I could also issue them papers so they can legally own these captive born babies. So uh, yeah, that was really cool I, to learn and learn about. So I think that's what I might do. Who knows guys, we might become breeders for birds. You better believe that our babies, I will make sure that they are completely, awesomely, supremely nourished with the best food. Um, give them the best chance at life. I will groom them and socialize the babies so that when they get to their loving owners, um, they make fulfilling pets. So yeah, that's also a possibility in the future. But we'll see. This is all gonna be such a learning curve, guys, honestly. I've tried to look around, guys, online, and I haven't found anyone who's housed birds in this kind of setup. So I think we will be among the first to be doing this, guys. And you know what else? Here's a big secret I've been keeping from everyone, but now I'm revealing it to you guys, is I'm gonna start a new channel for this aviary. In terms of format, I'm still mulling over how the videos will be, but definitely this aviary will have its own YouTube channel, guys. All right, I'm gonna go down, guys. Eventually, I'll get up to that level, towards the third floor. But for now, time for me to get down, all right. But let's try our best not to get injured here. One step at a time. All right. Guys, this is like an arm workout and a leg workout. Yes. All right. Success. Oh, wow, guys. In yesterday's vlog, you saw that they were working on these doors. Look at it now. Look at the color. It perfectly matches our window frames. How awesome! So guys, they are finally removing all the bubble wrap from the windows. They're removing the tape um, from the windows. It's legit! Wow guys, look. They've installed the glass partition. It's so tall. And it's a sliding door. See? Alright! And we showed you the shower head before. It's pretty large. I think it'll feel like bathing under a waterfall. Yes! Awesome. This is the master bathroom, by the way. Yeah, guys, they've continued tiling the anteroom. It's almost done now. Yay. Finally. Uh, oh my gosh, it's becoming real. And I really like these tiles. It brightens the room up. And man, I can't wait to fill it with tanks. Oh, wow, guys, they're installing the mirrors now. Ooh, what a process. All right, guys, so as you saw in yesterday's vlog and in previous vlogs, this here is a certain installment for our dining room area. Um, and I didn't say exactly what it was, but you guys gave some really good guesses. What do you guys think it is? Let me know in the comments. 
Um, so far, only one of you Mabuhai squad actually got it right, to my surprise, which comes to show you that you guys really know us so well. Um, but it should be really cool when it's done. It's a really unique feature that I don't think I've ever seen in any house. Um, so yeah, stay tuned guys. All right guys, top floors pretty much all tiled now. They're finishing tiling up the uh, roof deck. Yay! See that guys? Yay, 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 yay! So remember how I said we can set up any breeding pairs of birds in their own breeding cage? I feel like we could just put them in their cage here, up on the roof deck. Um, it's just perfect, it's the perfect spot. They get some nice sun, um, of course we would offer them a shaded area but they could also be in close proximity to like the aviary so they can still kind of like call at the uh, at the birds inside the aviary right so they're not completely detached from the flock but they won't be able to attack other birds while they're in their breeding phase you know what I'm saying yeah so there's a lot of space up here to also place bird cages and that kind of thing so guys something I forgot to show you by the way is they removed the blue tarp that used to cover the front of the house to keep all the dust from like flying to our neighbor's lot they removed it because most of the really dirty work is done and so now we can actually see the front of the house which we haven't been able to do for well for years we can finally appreciate the front this is it guys all right and there you go our home from the front. I always show it to you guys from the side or the back. They're of course doing, still doing work. They're finalizing that bottom part. And guys, look who's here. Hi, Billy. Hey. He's here to headbutt me. <laughs> or to lick my knee, one of the two. Hi, Billy. He's been here like grazing on all of this foliage here. He is the friendliest goat ever, but I don't let him lick. Like it feels weird when he licks. Hey, Billy. How are you doing? Can't wait to be living with you finally. My dogs need to like learn to treat you with respect though. That's gonna be really something. Oh my gosh, what is that? Is that a caterpillar? Do you guys see it? Look how good my eyes are. Oh, Billy's like, pay attention to me. Guys, there's this like gray caterpillar way down there. Okay, okay. <laughs> Hi, Billy. We love ya. How are things? How do, how do the plants at the Mabuhai Squad farm taste? Are they alright? This morning I watched him munch on like a huge bush of like acacia. He can actually eat all of this acacia. He loves it. Let's, let's try to grab some for him to eat. Hey Billy. See look, he loves it. Loves it. Here you go. You love acacia, right? Well, we got endless supply essentially and uh, turns out this species of acacia is non-toxic so we could even feed them to the birds yay billy is so funny he like he's like get me more acacia okay fine here i'll grab you a huge i'll try to grab you a huge branch you want more acacia here see look at him he's watching me grab the huge branch okay wait let me try to get you a big a big chunk sorry tree <sighs> gonna eat some of your leaves you like this yes he's like all right bingo okay come here come here away from the road I'm worried by the way guys if you're new Billy here was well he was an actor his name is Billy it from when it was a kid he depends on me in one of my previous YouTube parodies called Caldereta and he was just a little a little kid back then he was young we bought him from like I guess a goat farmer and he was so perfect like he took directions so well strangely he was honestly the best goat ever and so Arjun and I talked and we had already bought the farm right this house wasn't really built yet but we owned the land and we said you know what it would be sad to give Billy back to you know the farmer because he would be sold as meat and so yes yes Billy we didn't want to give you back so um, our former driver at the time offered to take care of him for you know as long as it took until our house finished 
And so I believe, was it last year or two years ago? Our farm was ready to accommodate Billy. Yes, Billy, and you came to us and we love ya. And he turned out to be super handsome, by the way. Um, according to our vet, Billy here is called a cashmere goat. So like the fur can be used to create cashmere, cashmere wool. But we're, we're not gonna shave you, Billy. We just love your blonde hair. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Hey, you didn't even finish the branch. There's more. Love Billy, can't wait to move in with him. Um, and you know what? We probably might get him a girlfriend. Um, speaking of farm animals, guys, obviously we want to have farm animals. We want to have chickens, all of that. RJ wants to still have his dream tortoise, which is an Aldabra tortoise. Do you guys know what that looks like? They're massive. We just learned that our property is allowed by the subdivision to house up to five cows. Guys, we're allowed to have five cows based on the amount of uh, lot space that we have. I found that kind of funny. Five cows? What are we gonna do with five cows? But yeah, I think if we do have a cow, we will just get one. It won't be for meat. It would really just be as a pet. I don't know if they have dairy... I'm sure they have dairy cows here in the Philippines, but I don't know what Filipino dairy cows look like. Most of the cows here, I believe, is like an Asian type cow, or like it was imported from India or something like that. Um, so they kind of look different from the cows in, say, like, Canada. But yeah, I would love to have a cow. We have this whole side lot, which we purchased last year, um, when the owner made it available. So we're like, yay! Our side lot is now available. So we got it, we grabbed it. Anyway, that's stuff we can decide in the future. I realize, guys, like, this is like animal farm. This is an animal farm paradise. And my dream as a kid, seriously. There's so much we could do here. All right, guys, so we're approaching late afternoon. It's um, sometime after four. And the light at this time looks so nice. It's like a beautiful amber light. Weather has been pretty good these past couple of days. No rain, it's just been hot. And if it did rain, I'm sure it was like in the morning, early in the morning. All right, Hoopo installed the other mirror and now they're going to install the middle one. All right. These guys are efficient. Oh, so that's what the back of a mirror looks like. <laughs> wow. All right. Guys, I love seeing experts performing their work. Oh, wow, okay. They use suction cups. They peel a part of it. Oh, wow, look at how clear that mirror looks. Awesome. Oh my. That really must be strong in order for it to be a handle. So now this gentleman can use this as a handle to lift the mirror. Oh, neat. Okay, let's see what they do now. Oh, they're gonna need some scaffolding. There we go. Up. Oh. Wow. Wow, guys. Man. Wow. Wow, this has to be like choreographed and coordinated. Okay, they're readjusting the suction cup handle. There we go. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. I'm like nervous, guys. <laughs> Two, three. And then they, oh, they s slide it into the space of the metal bracket that they installed. Oh, okay. Wow. Oh my gosh, fits like a glove. See guys, isn't that cool? I love watching experts at work. It's just a whole, like, love and appreciation for what they do. It, I don't know, that fascinates me. What do you guys say? Yay, RJ, the mirrors are installed. <laughs> happy. Yeah, I am happy. I love those mirrors. They're so clear. Like, see, and just seeing them in there, just, it makes it seem like the space is like, you know, the illusion of space is added. Do you guys see that? Like, it kind of looks like, like once all the plastic is off the mirrors, kind of looks like the home continues that way, which it does because the studio room is behind the aviary but it does give the illusion that you can walk 
down that way into the kitchen or you could walk down this way. It just really opens the space up. I really love it. Yay! That was a good choice to put a mirror there. I can check to see if I have a bad hair day now. All right, guys. Wow, what a long day. Gonna head back now to um, Tagaytay, our rental home where we're staying until we finally move in here. Yes. Thank you, Mabuhay Squad, for watching. Be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this vlog and hit that subscribe button. Come join our Mabuhay Squad. We will be your regular dose of positive vibes online. All right, guys, so we'll see you at the next vlog. Bye. Mm.